Well, hello, this is Rick with LearnDigitalAdvertising.com. We wanted to go over today the Data Studio feature for rolling date ranges. This is a feature that was launched in March. It's a great feature, absolutely necessary. We've been waiting a long time for it. It's a little bit tricky though. We made some mistakes early on in reporting and uh, we wanna help you prevent those mistakes. So we wanted to run through how that works exactly. So the rolling date range feature is a great thing. You know, typically with any date range selector, you have the ability to look at like the last 30 days as default. I think the last week is, was another choice for a long time. And the challenge was, well, what if I want to look at the last, you know, 12 months rolling or the last six months rolling or the last 90 days rolling? So this feature solves that. It lets you do that. And you can implement this in any feature. So whether it's the date selector or specific uh, scorecards. Um, today we're gonna look at a trend chart because this is one of the trickier applications to it. Um, and this is actually one of the biggest pain points. So if you, you may have had this issue with clients where you wanna show them like, a, here's a month over month view of YouTube views, right? A and what we're trying to do is look at kind of like a rolling period, how, you know, what has growth been? And the challenge has always been that we had choices to show the current year or the previous year or to do a fixed date range. And for our clients, in a lot of cases, we do the fixed date range. Uh, the problem is each month we'd have to update it to continue to give them that trend. So uh, this feature solves that, super exciting, but also very easy to get wrong. So uh, just gonna run through it quickly. So in looking at this trended chart, our time dimension is month of year because we wanted to roll up each month's stats. And our date range, you know, in the past has been custom and fixed, but let's look at some of the options for the new rolling date range feature. So you previously had all of these other choices, which you're gonna to wanna to do for rolling date ranges is go advanced. Uh, now you wanna be mindful of, you know, the start and end date. So we have to set the rules for the rolling date range. So uh, let's say, for example, we wanted to look at a start date, which is today minus one year and an end date of today minus one day. So logically, a lot of people may think that one year is today minus 365 days, but what it actually means because we're in 2019 is actually 2019 minus one year, which will take us back to the beginning of 2018. So you can see the end result of our chart begins in January and comes all the way up until you know this month when we're currently in April. Um, but some other ways to do this, if you just wanted to look at the rolling 12 months is actually to go today minus swap out years for months, and then we're gonna change that to 12 months. So in this case, we get the rolling 12 months, and you can see our chart starts in April and ends in April. Um, so that seems pretty logical. So just bear in mind that that 12 months is gonna go now all the way back to the beginning of April in 2018. Now, what you wanna be careful of, and a mistake we had made was actually going today minus 365 days, um, which would seem to be the same, but it's it's actually not at all the same thing, because what's going to happen here is April in 2018 is going to adjust because say is April 9th, it's only going to go up to April 8th in 2018. So we're not we're under reporting basically April 2018. So that seems like a little detail, but you want to be mindful of that because you don't want to uh, sort of skew that data in a way that you uh, don't intend to. So in a perfect world, what we would probably do is say today minus probably the, tw the 12 month, excuse me, probably the 12 months is going to be our best way to configure this. Now, if you think about the end date, what we might want to keep in mind here, if we start reporting on April, our client or us, you know, we may flip out a little bit because we're like, whoa, March was so high and April's low. And that's because we're halfway through April. So in some cases for clients, we don't really show them the current month in these trended charts until it's over. Um, so what we would do then for the end date is say today minus one and then just switch that to months. So when we apply that, then what we're going to get is April of 2018 all the way up until March to get that trend. Um, so these are just some different considerations. Uh, these are great, especially if you're scheduling report delivery and stuff like that. You won't have to update this. You won't have to worry about when the report gets sent out. Does it show up to the most current month? You know, that kind of stuff. So enjoy. I hope this helps make that rolling date range uh, feature a little bit easier for you. Have a great day.